Scarloe had been to the works to be mended, he felt much better. Rusty the Diesel was helping him off his rail car. Scarloe hadn't met the little diesel before. Rusty seems a kindly sort of engine, he thought to himself. I help to mend the line and do odd jobs, explained Rusty. I hear everyone is looking forward to seeing you again. Come on. Peter Sam was feeling depressed. He was still getting over his accident, but he wanted to start work again. Sir Topham Hack wouldn't let him. Another day's rest will do you good, he said. Besides, I've got a surprise for you. For me, sir? How nice, sir. What is it, sir? Scarlowe and Linnaeus work on the railway that weaves round lakes and along mountain sides. Their coaches are filled with visitors, and the engines are proud to run the line from rain or shine. The Falkman, no Steve Bacangi, Salt T Seagrid, Comments of the Rescue. Down, but they are old and they tire more easily. Their drivers understood this and they spoke kindly to them. There's more than enough work for both of you on this railway. The manager is sending two more engines to help us run the line. Scarloe and Reneus were pleased with this news and promised to give the new engines a big welcome. When Sir Handel and Peter Sam arrived, they found they had much to learn. What a small shed, grunted Sir Handel. This won't do at all. We're much too good for this old shack. He rolled proudly toward his coaches. Stephanie's visit to Sir Topham Hatt's railway was coming to an end. We shall miss you, said Sir Topham Hatt. Then he turned his attention to all the other engines. My railway is very busy, and I'm pleased with you, but you need help. A diesel is all that's available. Please do your best to avoid any uh, <clears throat> disturbances. What does that mean, whispered Duck. That means this diesel is difficult, snapped James. And he was. The diesel surveyed the shed. Not bad. I've seen worse. At least you're all clean. The engines glared. It's not your fault, but Sir Topham Hatch should scrap you and get engines like me. A fill of oil, a touch on the starter, and I'm off. No bother, no waiting. They have to fuss round you for hours before you're ready. little railway. One winter's night when the cold wind blew, the engines found it hard to sleep. What we need, suggested Toby, is to listen to a story. Yes, agreed Percy, a mysterious story. But, added Duck, it must have a happy ending. Driver told me a story, said Thomas, so everyone listened. Once upon a time, began Thomas, there were three little engines who lived in their own little shed on their own little railway. Their names were Duke, Stuart, and Falcon. Duke was the oldest and was named after his grace, the Duke of Sodor. He was proud of this and loved to keep the little engines in order. anything that Duke thought wrong, he would say, that would never suit his grace. What? Oh. Okay. Hi. Hi. Bye. Duke Bye. Old. See you later. Okay. Sorry, that's my bad. Sorry. Sorry, that's my bad. It was a beautiful night on the island of Sodor. The day's work was done, and the engines puffed safely home. Thomas, Sorry. Percy, 
Will you tell us the end of the story? You mean the one about Duke the Lost Engine? Exactly, said Henry. But please remind us of the story so far. So Thomas began, and here is the rest of the story he told. Sir Handel had been naughty, so Sir Topham Hatt made him stay in the shed for a while. Sir. Peter Sam was now busier than ever. He had to do Sir Handel's work as well as his own. He was very excited, and the firemen found him hard to handle. <clears throat> Anyone would think that he wanted to work, said Sir Handel, who was lonely and bored. All respectable engines do, replied Scarloey. Keep calm, Peter Sam, and you'll do well. But Peter Sam was in such a state that he couldn't listen. He collected some coaches and went on his way. <laughs> 